Good morning, my dear friends, and happy first day of Advent. As you can see, I'm in my kitchen. This is my happy place, definitely. Chefs on cooking shows are always bemoaning the fact that there is no such thing as smell o vision Foodies know that the single most attractive sense is that of smell. We just got done with Thanksgiving leftovers, right? And by the time we've made turkey sandwiches, turkey casseroles, turkey soup, we realize that maybe we're just a little tired of turkey. So why do we bother with it? Because of the smell. Turkeys have to cook for a long time. They torture us with the smell for hours. And the same thing goes for uh, barbecues or a, an, a, a good pot roast cooking throughout the day. The smell entices us, it delights us. And have you ever noticed that when you walk into a home where something is baking, it brings you to ah, the here now moment. That being said, there are distinctive aromas that are attached to Advent. The fresh fragrance of evergreens being brought into a home or hot apple cider or the spicy sweet smell of Christmas cookies. And I have some right here. Can you smell them? <laughs> fresh out of the oven, my friends. And isn't there something about the smell of freshly baked cookies that makes you feel like, oh, all is well in my world. It brings you back to presence. Ah, oh, presence. The word Advent comes from the Latin word Adventus and is based on the Greek word called Perugia which means presence, seeing the presence of God, being the presence of God, being in that state of presence. That is Advent at its core. Now, just pretend, well, maybe you've got some freshly baked cookies going on right now, but just pretend that you've got some freshly baked cookies and you can smell that aroma and just be in presence. So the theme of today's lesson is faith. And I'd like to tell you a story about how after 36 years of being in being a minister, how I finally understood faith. I thought that I had really understood faith for years, but I didn't have a clue. Friends, I know faith, and I know how it works now. So here's my story. In January of 2018, I wrote out my New Year's intentions, my goals, my intentions, how I wanted to see the future of that year go forward. Now, I took this one Bible verse literally when it says, and Jesus said to them, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible to you. Just have you ever seen a grain of mustard seed? It's, it's like a grain of sand. It's teeny tiny. You don't need much faith. So that year in 2018, <clears throat> it was different. It was different from my goals and intentions. I wrote down all of the categories, a career, finances, personal relationships, uh, family, health. But my intentions were open-ended, if you will without insisting on any kind of an outcome. And instead of dictating and micromanaging the universe of how I wanted everything to happen, I gave everything up 
And I said, my human mind is too small to bring these manifestations to pass. I don't know the hows. The universe know the how, knows the hows. And universe, oh, I trust and I have faith that you have ingenious ways and means of taking care of me and my family. I'm now trusting and I have faith in your synchronicity. Now, when you trust and you have faith in the synchronicity of life, you may have to give up things that you never, ever thought of giving up, especially control and being attached to insisting that something has to look a certain way. It must look like this. And that's what I used to do in the years past. I want this and I want it by a specific date. How many of us have ever been attached to how things must look? So I decided to give up all attachments to how I thought things should look. Just let go of the outcome. A couple of months later, in that year of 2018, I started to get a a tad bit restless. I was the minister for the Unity Church of Ventura, and I loved, oh, still do, love my congregation with all my heart. I had been their senior minister at that time for 15 years. I loved what I did. And I began to notice that every time I gave a sermon, dur during that sermon as I was delivering it, I would feel like, ooh, something is wrong. I'm not feeling the joy or the enthusiasm. I'm no longer enjoying this. And afterwards, I'd get in the car, and I'd turn to my husband, Steve, and I'd say, <clears throat> you know, I'm no longer enjoying this. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Something is wrong. And I sought counseling. I even talked to your wonderful minister, Reverend Kristen. I prayed. I begged God because I was in divine discontent. But I didn't lose my faith. I, I felt like something, there was something inside of me that was reassuring me that synchronicity was at work. So here's the deal. When you trust and you have faith in synchronicity, you will have to give up things that you may have been attached to. And it may be uncomfortable. Things that you love, things that you have grown accustomed to, things that you are emotionally involved with, and belief systems that no longer serve you. So the person that I went to for counseling is a dear, dear friend of mine. And as I was observing his magical and fortunate life, I mentioned, I mentioned to him, I said, you know, you always seem to get what you want when you need it, right at the right time. Things just magically appear for you. You are probably the most prosperous person I know. Yep, he said. I am in love with my life. So I asked, well, how do you magically receive things exactly when you need them? People appear that either give you things or they guide you to your next step, to another connection that is precisely what you need, when you need it. You are successful in every area of your life. How does that happen? I practice the law of attraction, but it seems like you're doing something more. What is that? And he said, well, I just gave you the biggest clue. You did? Yes, he said. Be in love with life when you are in love with all that is, with God, with presence then those of, a fam of familiar wavelengths will be attracted to you at the perfect time, at the, in the perfect place, in the, in the perfect way. Trust and have faith in the synchronicity of life. Kathy, the greatest power 
requires the lightest touch. Those were the greatest words he could have ever said to me. They changed my life. I began every day, and I still do to this day, I began every day being in love with God, being in love with my life. Now, there's a big difference, a big difference between loving your life and being in love with your life. Loving your life is a viewpoint, if you will. Oh, I love my life. Being in love means being in the essence of love. You are in the essence of a very high vibration, that high vibration, which is your natural state, my friends. Try it sometime. Just maybe remember a time when you were in love, maybe with a dog or a person where you were in love and let that feeling permeate your essence. Let it radiate out. Remember when you were in love, everything just was synchronized. You were in the right place at the right time. People were happy to be in your presence. Now, I want to call, I want to continue to tell you about my story about faith. And how being in love and trusting in the synchronicity of life will put you exactly where you need to be to supply you with precisely what you need when you need it. So when my husband and I, when we travel, we are always trusting and having faith in the synchronicity of life. And it comes easy to us, especially when we're traveling. Our way of traveling is we get in the car and we just see where life takes us. And it's always amusing. So now in the fall of 2018, we rented a car in Italy and we found ourselves on the coast of the, of the Amalfi coast. And serendipitously, we came across a bed and breakfast with our very own veranda overlooking the ocean and our very own cook. Every morning, we would walk out to our veranda only to find beautiful homemade pastries just strewed along this beautiful table. And we could pick as many as we wanted. And there was this aroma of freshly baked goods that was just out of this world. And I mean, it brought me back to presence, the here and now. Now there's something you need to know. I don't eat sugar. Sugar is not my friend. So that was not exactly my type of breakfast. And I told my husband, I said, I don't, I'm not eating that. That's like pure sugar. So I just, I just, partook in the aroma of how beautiful it was. And he said, oh, I'm eating it. And he just, he just ate it all. And he bit into an Italian lemon ricotta cake and exclaimed that it was probably the best thing he had ever tasted. And he asked if I could possibly replicate the lemon ricotta cake to be sugar-free. When I got home, from our vacation, I made a lemon ricotta cake that was gluten-free, grain-free, sugar-free, and pretty darn good, if I should say so myself. And people that tried it raved about it. Now, mind you, the universe is constantly giving you breadcrumbs, which is one step that leads to the next step. And then I woke up one Sunday morning in December of that year, 2018, and everything inside of me said, church ministry is no longer yours to do. Almost a year after I made my New Year's intentions that year of 2018. Now, that was a scary bit of guidance that I got. At the time, I had been in the ministry for 36 years, and it was the only thing I knew how to do. I didn't know how to do anything else. I wasn't trained to do anything else. 
And I was also a contributing factor to our income. But remember, trusting and having faith in the synchronicity of life means letting go to make room for what is possible, to make room for something greater, something bigger. Leaving the ministry was not hard for, or was very hard for me. It was not easy. I had no clue as to what my life would look like. And I thought, well, maybe I could sell my lemon ricotta cake at the farmer's market. Somehow I knew that cake was the next step to my future. I didn't know how. Then as clear as day, I heard this voice. So now we're in January of 2019. And I hear this voice that said, call your mom now and tell her that you will be sending her a cake. So here's the deal, my friends. When you get guidance, when you get a nudge, when you get some kind of excitement, that is faith in action, and you need to act immediately. So at once, I called my mom, and I told her I'd be sending her an Italian, Italian lemon ricotta cake. Keto style, right? Sugar-free, grain-free, and um, gluten-free. And she said, oh, that's nice, honey. By the way, she said, Hope and Tim are coming over tonight for our mastermind group. And since they are foodies, they might enjoy your cake as well when, they ar- when the cake arrives. Now, just to let you know who Hope and Tim are, they're dear, dear friends about my age. And uh, we've been family friends for a very long time. And both of them are brilliant at what they do. They are food brokers. They have over 30 years of taking approximately 150 products of other people's products to market. Markets like Whole Foods, Sprouts, Wegmans, QVC even, and grocery stores across the country. Hope is a genius at marketing and sales and business development. And Tim He's our food scientist, and I swear that he has this computer chip in his taste buds where he can taste something and break it down to its smallest component and then recreate a recipe that tastes even better than the original. So back to my mom. Hope and Tim walk in for the mastermind group, and they had mentioned that someone that day had brought up to them the idea that, you know, sugar-free keto products are going to be big in the future. Just then, my mom said, well, I just got off the phone with Kathy. She is sending a keto lemon ricotta cake. Later that week, they tasted my cake. Hope then gets this download this guidance just out of the blue to call me and ask me to become her partner in making keto baking mixes. I said, sure, not really knowing what that meant, but it was a breadcrumb for both of us in the right direction. Remember, one step leads to the next And the universe already knows how to get you to where you need to be. Faith. Trust. If you practice faith, you don't have to micromanage the universe. Remember, the greatest power requires the lightest touch. It has the bigger picture. A couple of days later, I'm in my car on the phone having a conversation with Hope and Tim about what the name of our company should be. And since Tim is our food scientist, I asked him a number of questions as to what the process would be. Like, so here we come up with recipes, right? And then how do we get it so that it's, there's, 
ways to preserve it, get it into a box. I mean, I was trying to understand this and asking a lot of questions and Tim, Tim kept saying, well, Kathy, basically it's all in the mix. And he kept saying that one statement, at which time at the, at, I think it was the last time he said it's all in the mix. I look across the street and there's a new store sign that is going up that says commingle it's all in the mix oh my god there was our sign we got our name and you can't get a better sign from the universe than an actual sign which to us meant a gathering together of mixing people of different ethnic groups, lifestyles, backgrounds, all ways of thinking, all faith. It's all in the mix. So we needed to register our domain name, our website, but somebody already had it. It's all in the mix with one X. And it was suggested that we use two X's. Hmm. Well, maybe X means something. It sure does. This is what I read. X means Christ. As an X mass. Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> and then I continued to read. But this symbol or marker can also be understood as a crossing over to another higher dimension. Hello. I mean, how clear is that? So now we have it's all in the mix.com with two X's, two Christ, I guess. <laughs> Do you see that when you trust the synchronicity of life, you don't have to force anything to happen. You don't need to make it happen in any way, shape, or form. You don't have to manipulate anything. Higher mind, higher mind, knows exactly what you need. Because your physical mind cannot even realize what the higher mind has in store for you. It knows the hows. It knows the ways. It knows ingenious ways of supplying you exactly what you need when you need it. So one day, Hope is serendipitously meeting at, at a Whole Foods market in Florida with the president of one of the largest natural foods marketing companies in the nation. This company represents 40% of all the products in Whole Foods and in Sprouts. In fact, in fact he is, serves on the board of directors of Sprouts. Their name, this marketing company, the name, Presence Marketing. And so she's meeting about another product, someone that she's representing, a, a client of hers. And <clears throat> she and this, the, the uh, CEO of this marketing company, they turn down the baking aisle and he says, you know what we really need? We need sugar-free, gluten-free, keto baking mixes. And with great pride, she said, oh, my business partner and I already have that. Now, mind you, this is very important. Two to 300 people a month who have natural products are clamoring to get to this company for them to represent them every month. And they only choose maybe a handful a year. And in that moment, we were a done deal. It was a miracle, a Christmas miracle. So we are now in presence marketing and they represent us. Now I want to bring your attention to something. The name is presence, right? That's what Advent is all about. It means Presence, presence. And that is especially important to us since we are a spiritually based company. Ah, 
Yes, the almighty presence is literally representing us. So we had our product, we had our name, but how about, we also needed, you know, how are we going to do this? Because we didn't have enough funds. We had put everything, all of our funds into getting this started. Well, that's where Presence Marketing came in. They have an offshoot called Omnipresence, hello, that take a few companies every year to invest in, and they chose us. They believed in us that much, or let's just say Omnipresence believes in us that much that they have invested in our company. And since then, we have attracted more investors that just happen to be of this like mind, this way of thinking. And as a result, every investor's meeting starts with prayer and they keep, every investor keeps our products and the company in their daily prayers. They bless the products that go out. And I would gather to say maybe not too many companies always begin with prayer and God first. <clears throat> so yes, God is the CEO of our company. Now, this is the thing. We launched our products right as the pandemic hit and we thought, oh, no, this is the worst time to launch a new product. No, having faith means knowing that it may not look good, but there is good in it. That's what having faith is about. Maybe it doesn't look good, but there's good in it. And then we received a call from Presence Marketing saying this, you have got the perfect products at the perfect time. Did you know what the number one selling item is at this time? Baking mixes. Grocery stores cannot keep them on the shelves. People are baking more than any other time in history. Whew, and they were right. We are now on Amazon and we can hardly keep it in stock. We, Our website, we're selling products at an ever rapid pace. And with the help of Presence Marketing, right now we are in boutique health food stores all across the country. And we will be in bigger, you know, those bigger health food stores. We'll be in bigger health food stores across the country in 2021. Never, ever in my wildest dreams would I have imagined myself being a minister of a church to a business owner with my dear friend, Hope. Hope. That's a pretty good word also for today. Hope and faith. And this is what I have learned, especially during times of uncertainty. Nothing is about trying because the physical mind does not have the ability to know how something is going to happen. Do you think that you can work hard enough to achieve in a lifetime what the universe can give you in an instant? Only your higher mind knows. Let your higher mind bring you your next steps, your breadcrumbs, and then make sure that you act on them. Today, I want to give you a formula that will elevate your faith to an art. Number one, as I mentioned before, be in love. Be in love with all that is. Be in love with God. And similar wavelengths will be attracted to you in the perfect time. Number two, when something manifests, even the smallest of manifestations, stop. Live in the moment. Live in presence. Take, take it in and, and acknowledge it. Appreciate. Give thanks. Go into that state of gratitude like we just celebrated last week. This great place of gratitude. And then three, allow. If you wish your life to become more miraculous, work in cooperation with God. Let God's ingenious ways and means manifest. 
beyond your wildest dreams. Yes, my friends, the Advent season summons all of our senses. Christmas carols, well, they fill our heads with the, the sounds of of, of music, you know, these Christmas carols, they, they immediately transport us maybe to a time of being more innocent. The vision of twinkling lights like you see back here and wreaths maybe on your doors, well, they add a little magic and a little color to our everyday lives. And then there is the smell. Yes, the smell, my friends, of freshly baked cookies that will transport you to being in the presence, in the, the, the here and now. And I hope that when you smell freshly baked cookies, that it will remind you to have faith in the organizing principle of the universe that is always working in your favor if you let it. That's how much God loves you. Well, thank you, my dear friends. Thank you for letting me tell my story. It has been a great joy to connect with you in this way. God bless you. And Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm.